afternoon, everybody. It's John from Team Doom Spiral, and I'm here with my co-host Garrett, also from Team Doom Spiral. Wanted to show you guys some of the new artwork that we got first <laughs> for our podcast. Uh, this was done by an artist in Mexico. Her name is Metal Chan. She's really good at what she does, so shout out to her. But today, what we're going to be talking about is actually going to be new nids. Now we've played. <laughs> I played a few games with them over the course of the week. So just wanted to kind of cover what I learned, what we thought about Garrett and I both, and what we put into practice, and how it all went down. Yeah, we we, we theory crafted we we theory crafted together, but he plays the games. So I don't actually own Tyranids anymore. Yeah, and uh, the artwork here is courtesy of uh, Garrett himself. Oh, I'm, nice. I'm loving these. <laughs> I love I love your art style very much. Uh, I appreciate it. Ooh, ooh, it's notices all MS, you playing. It's all it's all uh, MS Paint glory. Hey Amen. It's beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. So, the four games that I played were against Imperial Guard, Tau, Orcs, and Raven Guard. Um, all four games I played Leviathan. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the list uh, in a little bit, but basically wanted to talk about Leviathan as a whole. Now, pros and cons, uh, each high fleet has their own. We talked about it briefly in the podcast, but what I really liked about Leviathan was having permanently transhuman synapse creatures. Oh, that's so disgusting. All your warriors, uh, all your zone throws, neuro throws, hive tyrant, you name it. If it's got synapse, it is transhuman. <clears throat> the other thing that I really liked is that within 12 inches, which is synaptic link range, rather synaptic imperative range, it's going to be.
knives like Kraken or any of the other ones. It it is a trade off for that durability though. That's important to me, especially with how nasty other army shooting and melee is. Having a permanently transhuman set of models is is just awesome. Um, I think combined assault, the Leviathan specific. Uh, stratagem it's kind of like whatever where you have to have multiple units within synapse uh, not synapse within engagement range of an enemy unit and then you get an additional ap it might be helpful with armor of contempt but even then you know having to do that it's it kind of is it feels bad uh yeah i mean armor of contempt is just like against a couple matchups your weapons are just a little more feels bad like a Venom Cannon has like AP1 shooting at a Marine in cover, basically. Yeah. And then like a, bar, a Strangled Thorn Cannon has like AP0. Exactly. Like a Sister of Battle is in cover is taking a 3-up armor save against AP2 weapons. So it's, uh, it's kind of annoying. Yeah, it is. It definitely um, is. Death Guard Terminators basically have like a zero up armor save against most weapons in the game now if they're just in cover and minus one damage is just still good but I don't think that's going to push the army up too much no no from uh from what I've last seen most armies are kind of just mingling together in this soup of B tier <laughs> yeah uh all, can't, can't most nids. of them are face down. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead and hit to the next slide now. Uh, where we're going to be covering um, the loadouts for Hive Tyrants. Now, um, a lot of people are bringing Flying Hive Tyrants. However, you know, Garrett and I talked it out. And in practice, I think that the Walking Hive Tyrant definitely has its merits. And the main thing that gives it that merit is being able to have a shooting Hive Tyrant that has two Venom Cannons and one of them in the in, turn it into the Shark Gullet. Um, others are taking a more flexible build, which I've, I've seen some of the guys on uh, on, on the team take that, uh, which we we broke it down in a very yeah. simple way to see Virgin flexible loadout. Yeah, it's loadout. just it just does lie. so for the virgin flexible loadout like even if you just take bone swords which are free and you take a like even shard gullet right 15 damage shooting is stupid ridiculous i mean it's cheaper it can attack and it's like a bit more flexible like it could kind of terrain hop or something like it doesn't need as much support as the other one as we'll talk about but it just flat out deals less damage. And also because you're going to be trying to get some melee value or things are going to charge it because it's a melee monster. Because you're not going to kill it before it gets to you because you only have one gun. Um, people can actually hit you in melee or it's just prone to dying. And if you're going to bring any melee variant, just bring a flyer um, and rely on the transhuman aspect a lot more. I think it'll get you further than bringing a walking hive turn at all. But uh, yeah, John and I have a made the chad loadout of the hive tyrant um this thing is like what 190 points yeah it's, it's uh, <laughs> bargain basic it, value <laughs> yeah it's basically like it's, it's like i don't know how this thing is like 30 points more than like most tanks in the game and it's just like infinitely tankier or like does more damage than most knights right now <laughs> it's just it's it's like, it's crazy like silly. Minimum it's of twenty. Funny. It's like twenty-seven potential damage with its guns. It's yeah. it's really hard to kill. It's, oh well, it reply. Uh, so one of the cons is you kind of need Tyrant Guard to screen for him because he de he does need line of sight. Yeah. Um, also, if you get into melee, all he's doing is using those weapons as shotguns, which is still effective. Might I add, it is still six attacks. Attack like quote unquote six attacks. And heavy three strength nine AP minus three four damage like and shard goal it's actually the same but better in every way. Yeah, and with shard goal you're still hitting on twos in combat. The venom cannon you're going to be hitting on threes, but boohoo, you know. Boohoo, yeah, God <laughs> forbid, right? Yeah, boohoo, boo the heavy it, venom cannon, boohoo the shard it, gullet. 
Oh, uh, I mean, of course, anyone who's like, oh yeah, these are two technically the same model, and we put harder to kill for the, the Chad loadout. It's harder to kill just because, like, it's infinitely more safe. You're 36 inches away from most things, or you're within a reasonable distance. You can move away and still deal damage and be comfortable. You could still just be, like, a supportive unit with psychic powers and not having to do stupid things like running in, casting paroxysm and shit like that. It's honestly just, like, I think it's kind of... Like a, it's like the safest choice for an HQ. Like it's tough and no psychic. It can support the army, spreads fearless, and fucking gives rerolls, hits on twos, and does a shit ton of damage from pretty far away. Thirty six inches is basically the whole fucking board in this game. Oh, definitely. Uh, I don't think like just double down on the heavy venom cannons. I think it's way better than ever bringing anything else. Oh, most definitely. I what I've been hearing is murmurings of them going to be nerfing that at some point. So I'm just going to milk this while uh, I can. Yeah, I 100% guarantee they are. It's just going to be like, you can take one heavy venom cannon. Um, they'll probably let you take two stranglethorn cannons because at the bottom you can see they're complete dog shit. They're one of the worst <laughs> weapons in the entire codex, in my opinion. Like, I understand. Like, everyone's like, oh, I would kill for this stat line in my army. Well, guess what? It's in Tyranids. It's not in your army. And compared to other tier <laughs> weapons, it's god-awful. Like, Strength 8 AP-2 two, 2 damage blast is bad, because if your guys get into close combat, they can't shoot the damn... Like, we'll just go through the pros. It has more shots, right? Yeah. This one's a uh, heavy Venom Cannon. is heavy 3. This is heavy D3 plus 3. So on average, you're getting, like, 5 shots. Um, that's still only 10 damage. And um, it has less strength, shittier AP, and does 2 damage. Which, um... You only get one reroll as a life, and so if you're rolling five dice, you're gonna it's gonna be a lot worse than just rolling three, in my opinion. Um, strength nine is way better than T strength eight because there's a lot of T eight pieces of crap out there, especially with knights coming out to the fold. Um, Armor of contempt makes stranglethorn cannons feel like the most tissue attack weapon in the game, and as soon as you get into close combat, it turns off the heavy venom cannon. You could use it as we said, like a shotgun. Um, it's five points more. Then a Stranglethorn Cannon, which is like its biggest downfall. It's like, oh crap, you're paying five points more. But um, it's better in every way. Um, it's like, it's not going to whiff as much. And when enemies do take it on their invul most of the time, or a, a Custode fails his save, which is a four up invul, and then the other one's like, I guess it's a four up armor too, but the thing just doesn't do enough damage. No. If it had more if I had more shots, lower strength, higher AP, and the same damage, like if it was D like assault D six plus six or something, um I think it would be a lot better. You'd see it more just as an anti horde option. But like it just it, it, I don't think it competes it it's confused. Like the weapon doesn't make it doesn't do enough compared to like what you could just A do in melee. Or just shoot them from across the board with a heavy venom cannon. Exactly. The other thing is, with all the reduction in damage out there in the game, it's just doing one damage. Whereas with the venom cannon, you're going to at least get three damage, no doubt. Oh, and yeah. that's still like, really if, strong. <clears throat> if you fight like a Custodes player and they're like, oh, here's my here's my Dreadnought, here's my Gladius Dreadnought, this thing's doing like one damage to it. It's like that's pitiful or like if you like even like a lehman russ like you're wounding the like half of your hits just plink off of it because you're wounding it on fours yeah like you just feel it's like strength eight is good theoretically right it's really good i mean i know lehman russ is kind of like the fucking stupid pick but like guard codex will come out soon and like knights are coming out so like strength eight is just not as it's not as like appetizing as strength nine in my opinion Especially just because, like, most squads are, like, people are running, like, usually min squads now. No one's, like, really buying into, like, giant squads anymore. Or they're just bringing monsters or tanks, right? Like, I, like when's the last time you've seen anyone, like, bring, like, oh, here's my, besides me, of course, because I'm horrible at this game. <laughs> but it's just like, oh, yeah, like, here's my fucking ten Plague Marines, like, or like, oh, I use my, like, ten, whatever, or like six of these units. Like, everyone's just usually, it's usually min squads. I don't see a lot of, like, big squads of guys anymore. 
No, no. Uh, so the one thing that I did kind of like have a hard time with was minim- like four man centurions during the Raven Guard game. That was that was like chewing on gravel uh, for <laughs> even with the shooting, but that's specifically because there is a ability in successor chapters for Raven Guard that if you're without of 18 inch range, you're getting an additional uh, like basically counting as light cover. So. Every time I was shooting a Venom Cannon, it was counting as AP1. Kind of felt rough, but every time one got through, that's a dead Centurion. That's a dead Marine. That's a, you know what I mean? And against Guard, yeah. <laughs> I was just peeling, peeling Lehman Russes. It just didn't even make a difference. You you failed two, two saves. Okay, that's eight damage. Or just, you know, two with yeah. the Shard Gullet. Okay, that's, that's, it's got two wounds left. You know, you. Yeah, like. Armor of Contempt, I think, just makes a Strangle Thorn so bad. Like, a Marine in cover is like, okay, cool, I have my 3 up armor safe. Yeah, if and, I... And, like, all he, all he does is just taking, he's taking advantage of a piece of terrain. It's, it, he's not even doing anything. And think about this. Into Lehman Russes, you're getting, it's got a, they're getting a 4-up save because it's only AP2. They're still yeah. Strength 8, so you're wounding them on 4s. And... I don't... I don't know how relevant guard is though, so I wouldn't really want to talk too much about it. But like as just a T eight brick of stats, like a Lehman Ross is, I guess it makes sense. Um, but just like even in determinators, this thing doesn't kill them that well. No. Like I understand like four, like they have a four up armor, so against like regular terminators, like you're giving them a better save yeah. against because like they don't it doesn't put them on their five up and vulnerable. Well, I guess they have armor of contempt anyways, but like. Still, it doesn't kill a Terminator as soon as it hits him. No. It's just, it does two damage instead of one. And, like, Dark Angels are, I think Dark Angels are going to make a comeback because of Armored Contempt. Like, the army just, like, the, I think it's, like, Deathwing or whatever. Yep. Deathwing Terminators. I feel like it just got more annoying. I don't actually know. I'll have to look more into that. But, like, I just feel like that list got more annoying to deal with. Oh, yeah, because they can reduce damage by one. So that means your Stranglethorn Cannons are, guess what? One damage. damage. One and damage. Nothing, yeah. nothing, basically. Yep. So. Uh, I just think for five more points, you get such a much... Like, you get... Like... Such a better deal. Oh, yeah. So, long long short of it, Chad loadout, absolute dece, virgin loadout, on the side of feasts, I think. Um, yeah, no, that... Uh, just... Just go all in on Venom cannons. They're so good. They just kill the threats that you actually care about, and then your monsters can just manhandle anything else. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Like... <laughs> Big time. Big time. Next slide here. Harpies. The base high oh. test flyer. <laughs> oh, uh, harpies are, like, one of the most... Like, I don't want to say, like, cringe units in the book, in my opinion, but the, what, for what they do, they are the dumbest thing. They're so cheap. In my opinion, they're like sub two hundred points. They they do too much. We had to like think of cons. Like literally, the can't melee ground anymore has to hover. Was like literally like, oh yeah, I guess it can't do that anymore. It's not. It's <laughs> not even like. There's nothing bad about this unit. Like oh no, like it gives your opponent like, um, take it down or whatever. Whatever the secondary is. Bring to, it down. To, yeah. Like, it gives them, bring it down. I guess two points to bring it down, right? I think it's two, maybe yeah, three. Yeah, two points. Two points. Two points? Yeah, wow. That's that's crazy, dude. Boo. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah, well, I just think it's way too good. It moves fast. Like we, So we'll go through the pros. It moves fast. It moves 40 inches, right? It can pivot twice. Pivot twice. Yep. One at the start of the move, and then the second one at any point in the move. So it's like the Archeo Copter. <laughs> And when we say ignore terrain, we meant for movement purposes. It doesn't actually ignore like like terrain effects or anything. Oh like god, that. could you imagine? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would have been like what, like some stupid upgrade, like fucking sonar. I don't know. Oh lord. Stupid damage. It does have two heavy venom cannons. Um, we're gonna be hearing about heavy venom cannons a lot in this this episode. They're I think they're just way too overtuned. Like, if, for instance, to, to put it in perspective, like, it's the price of a heavy bolter, right? Yeah. Like, Marines pay 10 points for a heavy bolter. You are paying 10 points for a last cannon on steroids <laughs> that does more damage more consistently. Yeah. 
a good last cannon. <laughs> yeah, we'll just preface it. Yeah, we'll just preface it like that. A good last cannon, because like I don't want to put words in my mouth, but like I'm pretty sure Devastator with a last cannon, like the last cannon's like what? I think it's like twenty fucking points or something stupid. Like it's so overcast, dude. It's so dumb. Yeah, it's already better with four flat damage than D six. D six damage is literally D6 damage so bad. Is so god awful. Yeah. Um. um they like, are super cheap, like like you said, 160 points base, and then when you give them the uh, buffs that we'll talk about later, they literally they don't even crack 200 points. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, they, Which actually does matter for to the last. It These does. things don't really fuck with your to the last that much. No, they don't. Uh, they are high wounds. They they're an odd wound number. They're 13 wounds, so that means you can't just like easy peasy pick them up. And if you leave them on that one wound, then God help you, because they're going to be healing next turn. <laughs> they're <laughs> yeah, minus one to likely. hit, because they're aircraft. And uh, I'll let you talk about the bombs. <laughs> Alright, so basically, these units have, um, like, the... They have, like, the, the ad mech bomb roll, but they can do it every turn over one unit they move over. And, like, I think monsters count as six. Like, vehicles and monsters count as six. Yep. And one per, one per squad of infantry maxing out of ten. Every four does a mortal wound. They can just do this every turn. Like, so, like, you're doing damage in the movement phase, which is funny, because, like, you could fuck up Catan, or, like, you could kill, like, Phoenix Lords and shit like that. You, it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't say, like, oh, closest or non-character, it just literally says any unit you move over. So, I mean, a character wouldn't be as good, because it's one dice, but you know what I mean. It's yeah. just, the thing is so versatile, it could just bomb every turn. Like, it, I think it's too stupid. Yeah. It also it just hits on threes. Let's also just say that like it's a tyranid that shoots on threes natively. Like thing like oh God, it's so cringe. Um, getting weapon skill four up to three up is like super stupid because like the entire tyranid roster did that, and this yeah. is like just this is just like cake. Yeah. This thing has two heavy weapons that it shoots at full ballistic skill. It's wild. The other thing is that it can be put into redeploy at the end of your turn using the Encircle the Prey stratagem because it's a flyer. Now that's really nasty, which means you can just fly all the way back into someone's deployment zone if you put them right on the line. Bomb, shoot, and then pull them right off at the end of the turn. Yeah, you can redeploy <laughs> and then fly on next turn because it's turn two. Yep. Woo! Rinse and repeat with the other one because you can pick up one at a time, one each turn, and just alternate. It's hilarious. Yeah. The cons. Really make... Yeah, the cons is like, they'll probably get shot first. They're outrunning your army, and, like, yes, we make them durable, but they are still just a 13-wound, 3-up safe monster. Yeah. <laughs> just, um, just. Just, just, <laughs> by the way. And with minus one to hit. <laughs> um, they're hard to buff. They, they're probably not going to be in synaptic link range. They're just going to outrun your army, like we said. Um, you can only have two. It's 2,000 points, only two flyers, and they can't melee ground because they're flying. Um, these are literally the only cons we can think of. <laughs> <laughs> I guess air air weapons or whatever, you have plus one to hit them, like the iron hail weapons or whatever. They get Rip, plus one to hit flyers. Riptide velocity trackers. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. These really niche upgrade. I'm not going to say the niche weapons because everyone. I'm pretty sure everyone took like iron hail stubbers and shit just because it had so many shots. Yeah. But like... I don't, it doesn't matter. You get a plus one hit this fucking thing. You're already on a five. Who gives a shit? But, like, <laughs> it's T7. It's so stupid. Yeah. But, like, uh, the, uh, just, just these niche upgrades that give it plus one hit against flyers, you're never going to see those, so it doesn't matter. Yep. And you should always take them in pairs. It makes your opponent yes. mauled, and it gives you the versatility. So, like, even if you lose one, oh, okay, I got one more. Anecdotally, I had two of these during a game I played against orcs and he shot everything he had at one brought it down to one wound I used rapid regeneration which is now one cp love it and I rolled a three it was back up to four which made it mid bracket because the brackets on these things are very forgiving so now suddenly I'm still being able to move 30 inches and just bomb the shit out of whatever it's uh it's gross <laughs> it's yeah. gross also, did we mention his two heavy venom cannons? Like this, thing, it also is like a has like uh, an, it has an assault eight, like like um, smart missile system. Yep. 
sting yourself. Strength five, AP, yeah, it's strength five, AP minus one, one damage. I'm pretty sure it's only like 36 or 24 inch range, but it's still eight shots. Like, that's a lot of shots. Just yeah. to shoot at random things, just to plink stuff away. Um, I So, the loadout for each one is just obviously going to be double heavy venom cannon. Yes. They the, Like, with double strangle thorn, they just don't do enough damage. It's just pitiful. You would think that, like, 2d3 plus six shots to strike the AP minus two, two damage flat with blast would be good. You would be sorely mistaken. It is not good. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Yeah, but no. The two staples, so so these adaptations that we were talking about earlier, uh, the uh, adaptive physiologies that you should take uh, should be one should have dermic symbiosis and the other should be synaptic enhancement. So dermic symbiosis used to be double wounds for bracketing and you get a five up now it's a four up invuln save so having one that's just going to have a four up throughout the entire game is great for durability and the other one is it gives it synapse which uh, translation it gives it uh transhuman for the yeah, other it one. gives it transhuman that's the funny part yeah so um, disgusting <laughs> quick side tangent um if you're playing leviathan or i, I don't know i'm just here as a general never bring voracious ammunition I feel like people are running that, and um, I don't. I don't think you should run it. I think it's bad. I also think it's bad. I tried. I thought about it, but only because I misread it at first and thought that every single hit that every, you got was a was a yeah. mortal. But no, nah. you just get one, the D three mortals. So oh, I was like, it's not even constant. So it's not synaptic enhancement is actually cheaper than that, and you can bring in Leviathan, which is funny. Yeah. I love and also it spreads shadow in the warp. So if you like jump on an Eldar army or something, and you just sit there with your guy, you can play. I don't know, so you can play Kronos, but actually don't do that; it'll be useless. But like you, you <laughs> just have shadow in the warp. So like they they perils on doubles, right? And they take an extra mortal wound whenever they perils. Yeah, that's I'm really pretty good. sure that's what it is. Yep, that is. I don't I don't actually remember what shadow in the warp does. No, nope, uh, you, you got it. You got it. Played uh, well. I mean, like even back in eighth edition, I barely remembered it. It was so useless. But with the so I haven't, I can't speak to it about using it against psychic armies. I only played against one psyker, but and he was it was kind of a non-issue. It was in Raven Guard, yeah. It was no, not in Raven Guard. It was orcs. Um, it was orcs. Oh. Yeah, but otherwise, yeah, definitely Weird. useful. Highly recommend. These guys are like super decent, like next degree decent. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide here. We're going to talk about our next. I love these harpies, though. They're my baby. I get to use my Yancey harpy. I love it. <laughs> next is going to be Carnifexes, the cheap, spammable gum bug. <laughs> um, I love that. Look at those little guys. <laughs> <laughs> the pros, they are cheap. They're only 120 points. They're T7 with, uh, I think, nine wounds. Um, they've, I said decent armor, uh, I thought they still had a 3 up, it's actually a 2 up, so they have pretty good armor. Native damage reduction, they have minus 1 damage, that, that's just a base rule, I think it's called like Armored Chitin or something. Decent yes. movement, they, they move pretty fast, they're good in melee and shooting, and they need very little strategy support. Like, maybe you'll transhuman one of them. Maybe. But they don't really need a lot to be good, from what I can see, and from what I can tell. Um, they're just, yeah, like it said, like, great all-rounder gun platforms, great brawling monsters. Um, their cons is they add a little bit of TTL complexity, because they come in a unit, and they separate at the beginning of the game. So, complexity in a good way, or it can kind of screw with you a little bit, I don't really know, it depends on how you play. So, like, to get, to deny the TTL point, you need to kill all three of them. So this is really beneficial to you, so you could have one play defense or, like, screening, and then the other two could play mid-board or a little more aggressive if you wanted. Um, they have no obsec. You can't give them obsec in any fleet you want to bring them in, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And they have no native invul. They are, they are just an armor save, which is fine. Um, they could still outperform units really well. Uh, just the no obsec does hurt a lot. Yeah, it's funny that you talk about TTL because it's very applicable. I used it for two of the three games I played, and forcing you to shoot at Carnifexes or try to shoot at Carnifexes that are in my backline, it's like, cool, now you're forced to ignore all the stuff I have in the front. 
So it's like literally not only are they a distraction card effect still, but they are very effective at what they do and very durable. They can take a lot of shooting and take a lot of abuse. I didn't lose a uh, T-tail point once uh, during those games because of that. So yeah, they are amazing. So yeah, no, they're super good. Um, also, they're monsters, so if you go second, you can activate the zone throw of synaptic imperative ability and give them a four up invuln, so they're even more durable if you go second. So you, you could kind of weather the turn one fire if you don't really get a good deployment or something like that. Yep, even better, um, you can take a third option and hide them because they're small enough that you can just put them behind any yeah, piece of terrain. They're, yeah, they're honestly tiny. They're either <laughs> not big enough. So we have the Chad loadout here. It's cheap, efficient, <laughs> spammable. Uh, heavy venom cannon. Uh, it's, I think it's ten points on these guys. Yep. It's a it's a heavy venom cannon. We've talked about it this whole pod, this whole episode or whatever. Um, so you've seen it. It's car effect sighting talents. It's literally free and gives them an extra attack. So I think they go up to like what five attacks on the charge or six attacks or something crazy. And it's just strength six, AP minus three, three damage flat. That's super good. Really like, good. That, that's like so. That's like so stupid. That's a free weapon. <laughs> Getting six attacks then, on the charge with them too. Woo! Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it. Enhanced senses. This is a ten point upgrade to make them hit on threes. And you would think about it you're like, oh, if I just like cut corners here, bring enhanced senses, you won't regret it. Hitting on threes with card effects with shooting is like so nice because they are a huge part of your army. Unless you want to cut one of them from enhanced senses or like something cheeky to like make TTL like them not a TTL target. I would, I would not recommend cutting enhanced senses. Hitting on threes is very vital, especially because each one gets a reroll of Leviathan because they become separate units at the start of the game. That's right. Well, um, I never took a ballistic skill penalty in any of my games, but I did see a game where someone did. And imagine if you didn't bring enhanced senses and you were hitting something on fives. That's a feels bad. That's a feels yeah, bad. A feels bad. Like uh, even like uh, I don't think custodes particularly have a good matchup into Tyranids because the high damage weapons. Like oh, if I just fail four up, I lose an, I lose like a super expensive model. Right. But like um, for instance, like they have a guy that just gives dense cover to people within I think six or twelve. So like that'll fuck your army a lot. Of just minus one to hit will actually mess up Tyranids. Not consistently, because you have free reroll, but like, if your high damage weapons miss a lot, it's obviously going to hurt more, because you do have like lower number of shots, but that's kind of like, oh, no shit, dude. But, <laughs> but that's like, that is like one of the weaknesses of the army, I guess I could say, is like, if you miss, like, it fucking hurts. <laughs> Big time. But hey, you could also like, put nine of these guys on the board, dude. Yeah, you you got three brooch squads. So this is the brooch squad, we're just going to call it the brooch squad. It's 360 <laughs> points. Is three card effects with sighting talents and enhanced senses. Um, they have three heavy venom cannons, so they're each of them are dealing like max twelve damage, most likely four or eight. Um, twenty seven damage, twenty seven wounds at minus one damage. I know, sorry, that pin bullet points kind of fucked up, but that that's a lot of that's a lot of wounds for three hundred sixty points at that's minus awesome. one damage. Super um, good. Good mid board bullies. Yeah. They don't bracket, which is amazing. And then they're most likely going to take more than one shooting phase to take out, which is really important because they're, like I said, they're molt layer, like we've been saying. Sorry. They're mm. multiple units at the start of the game. So, yeah. like, just making your opponent waste activations or chancing a split fire or something on them, that does help out a lot. Yeah. And, and it's also like, a very bad trade for your opponent because it's like you allocated half your army to shoot at it and kill one congratulations you killed a 120 point model here's two more <laughs> yeah and, you, you see like, yeah. or in some lists it's five more like card effects are super good i think i don't know i think running three is a good spot if you want to run three i know your list you run three screamer killers as well if you don't even want to run screamer killers you just run two brooch squads 100 percent viable in my opinion Big time viable. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think you need to run because, like, if you think about it like this, a screamer killer has four more attacks than a card effects with sighting talents. That's yeah. it. Yep. It's. I mean, that's crazy. That's good, right? It has fucking ten attacks, but this thing has six and it can shoot. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, and it's cheaper too. So. 
It's kind of it's it's more just how you want to play the game. If you want a melee threat like a screamer killer, and you're a good enough player to terrain hop it or whatever, go for it. Right, you could, you will probably get a lot more value. But if you're uh, if you're like a learning player, 100, percent just just lean on the brooch, take advantage of it while you can, because it's just such a good unit. Definitely, these guys are dees. Alrighty, dude. Moving on to the next slide here. Warriors, oh, my favorite. The weighty OPSEC units. The weighty, <laughs> weighty OPSEC troop. Um, look at those obviously, <laughs> yeah, Look at the one at the bottom right. <laughs> my hero. <laughs> He's giving a big thumbs up and a smile. Look at him. <laughs> but Warriors are just... Obviously, we buy them because they've seen apps. They're just transhuman troops. It's like you can't get anything better than that. Like they're cheap and they're transhuman and they're they're really good. We'll, we'll go over the pros. Yeah. Um. Synapse, that's the first one, right? Leviathan, transhuman. It's crazy. Great stats. They're T five now, strength five. Um. A lot of their weapons are just free. Like you don't have to pay for them. Like a death spitter used to be five points back in eighth edition. Or I think it was five five yep. points, ten points. Five now points. it's just free, and it's twenty four inch range. It's way better. Um. And also. They got an extra AP, which I understand Armor of Contempt is a thing, but, like, against other armies, it's really good. Like, this thing will just host Eldar. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, they have, like, what, four attacks base? Five with a bone sword or something crazy? Like, they're just such a good unit. They just hold objectives. And if you wanted to, you could get rid of the Leviathan reroll if you really don't think you need it. And you could do the... All your units can heroically intervene, and they become such good objective holders. I, I think you're, I mean, like, it's, it's I mean, you have to bring troops, right? These are the ones you bring. <laughs> Big time. I, uh, and you know, it's hilarious. I, I totally forgot that Death Spitters had an extra AP. I was playing them as one AP this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my lord. They're so good. They also have six inches extra range now, the 24 inch range, which is ridiculous. Oh, I love I it. I thought they were, I mean, like, in 8th edition, when I used to run Warriors, I gave them Death Spitters, and I thought they were good at 18. Yeah. What I really liked is the way I ran mine was in four mans with double bone swords and death spitter and then one venom cannon in each. The venom cannon is only five points and the double bones, the dual bone swords right here, give them plus two to their to their strength. So they're going to be on strength seven. I also gave them adrenal glands for the extra inch of, of range to move and the extra strength. So they're strength eight. Now that's nothing to sneeze at. AP minus two, two damage. It's pretty vile. Actually, and then having a venom cannon each. That's there's your stringer thorn. There's a, this is a better stringle thorn cannon with less <laughs> shots, higher AP, and you honestly like. Why would you not take a venom cannon? It's only five points. You're you're getting like some decent value out of these guys. Yeah, it's like like so. We'll we'll break down the loadout a little more. Like uh, we'll just we'll go down. Yeah. We'll we'll go over the cons. So we're all over the place. We're, warriors are so great. Uh, the cons, I couldn't really think of any, just that they low damage compared to the rest of the book, which is funny to say because most of their stuff is 2 damage. Like, each warrior has a potential of, like, 12 or 10 damage in melee or something. Like, they're ridiculous. But, like, the fact that these guys are, they're, they're not a spotlight unit. They're there to win you the game. The other guys are there to table. Like, it's ridiculously stupid how good these models are. <laughs> like... There's no, oh, there's like nothing bad to say about a warrior. No. no Especially when they're transhuman. Like, they're such good models. I mean, maybe, like, what, they, they have a four-up armor still? They maybe do have that, a four-up armor. That's like their one, like, maybe that's their downside to me. I, that's it, dude. Maybe they should move seven inches. I don't know, six inches seems kind of slow for a warrior, but. They're also fearless. Oh. Yeah, they, yeah, they are fearless. I love the, it. <laughs> they're such a good unit. They spread that synapse, the synaptic link range and stuff. They're just, they're, I know it sounds like we're simping for these models, but like they, they're just perfect. They're just the perfect troop. <laughs> There's no reason to take any other troops with these guys on uh, board, in my opinion. Yeah, I think, oh, I feel like Termagant's really just, like, they're good, right? They have a smart missile shot. It's like their basic gun and stuff like that, but like, I don't know. Why, why even bother? Just... Just bring units that'll just completely kill anything. 
Right. There's no reason to bring a termagant when you can just bring warriors and dead spinners are free. It's literally a smart missile that shoots three times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love it. But yeah, load out Venom Cannon. Like we said, great source of damage too. Let's warriors yourself out a little bit. That's like the only benefit, really. Um, and strength 8. It's pretty high strength for just a 5-point weapon. That's a 5-point weapon, by the way. Let's just add that. It's 5 points. Oh, yeah. Um, bone swords, these are free. That's the crazy part. These are free. <laughs> I love them. Um, they give an extra attack for God knows what reason. And um, when people get handsy with you on your objective, you can literally just kill them all. Yeah, these things like do it's... on Marines. They, they really yeah, do. do. AP minus one sucks a lot, but every failed four up just kills a guy. That's yep. what you gotta remember. Also, they're wounding you on fives, too. Yep. Because they're your T5 most of the time. Like, they're your T5 and they're strength 4 most of the time. Um, like, Eldar Power Swords, wounding you on, like, I even Eldar Power Swords, but, like, Power Swords, wounding on fives. Um, Seraphim, wounding on fives and stuff like that. Because they're only strength 4. Uh, yeah, this is, like, it's like a Plague Marine's wet dream. <laughs> Just like, wow, you're transhuman. Damn, that's crazy. Damn, bro. That's Man, wouldn't it be crazy? Like, dude, it'd be so stupid, these guys. Like, if they had minus one damage. Oh, wait, they do. <laughs> one Boom. CP. Boom. One CP. A group of tier warriors is minus one damage from from all... Subtract one damage of that attack. So, till the end of the phase, you just minus one damage for one CP. Yep. And like, for a unit shooting of five, and or, melee. five or fewer. Love it. Shooting and melee, dude. It's just... They, they just stand there and they, they, they win you the game. Like like with the bottom, like the warrior trio, this is 80 points by I had. This this th three man unit is 80 points. They have a heavy, they have a venom cannon, not heavy, but still great. Nine wounds at T5, the four up save, transhuman if Leviathan. They have great melee, they they hit on threes, and they can bully other troops off of their objective really easily. Like, if they don't get wiped out, or if they don't complete a charge, or if the Gene Circle player is just standing on your objective, like, completing a secondary or something like they usually do, you can just wipe them out. Very easily. And reliably. Even in the shooting phase. Like, the Death Spitters can just wipe them out. Oh, yeah. Um, anything else you want to add up before we uh, talk about the bottom right warrior? We can talk about his message. Go for it. He's got a message for you guys. So the, the bottom right warrior holding objectives is a vital role to winning in ninth edition. Warriors are there when the game not table your opponent. Um, I think if you're getting more acquainted with Tyranids or like you're newer to the game, just let your warriors sit on objectives and don't feel bad if they do literally nothing the entire game. You are bringing them to do that. So just get in the habit of sitting them on an objective and waiting there. Um, the more technical part of the game will be like uh fighting for the midboard objective or even redeploying harpies to go steal objectives from your opponent i, I guess flyers can't hold objectives can they never mind unfortunately no yeah my bad i'm thinking of uh crusher stampede days when they, they used objective. to they used to be able to yeah that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking of but just like have your warriors send objectives and don't feel bad if they do nothing um Honestly, right? Like, in ninth edition, you build lists with the idea of a unit, of like units standing on objectives, and even if they do nothing, they still get you points. Right. Definitely. Like, that's what I do. Like, I'm like, I don't think of Guardian Squads or Custodes, like, oh, what's the DPS output of this unit? I'm just like, okay, how well can this stand on the circle? Right. And stay on the circle. And stay that's on the circle, the, yeah. right? For sure, dude. Like, Hold those objectives. I think a lot of, yeah, a lot of people just need to know that. Also, like, they can do actions, their infantry, and their obsecs, so they can just do actions. Exactly. Warriors are good. Although, they're great. Though. I don't really know which actions you'd be doing. Maybe raise the banners, but, like, I don't think so. Could do what raise the banners, R&D, mission secondaries, all depends. I don't know if you They're can flexible. do with your list, though. Your list, probably not. No. Not, not with my list, exactly, but... You can tech into other actions. 
They, they move pretty yeah. fast. They're, they're, yeah. All right, dude. Next faster slide. Than death code. Yeah, faster slide. than death code. Conclusion. Look at that. <laughs> I love the 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 <laughs> brain zone boy. Three. Yeah. <laughs> zone three, yeah. Oh man. So, so in summary, um, this is just part one of some of the units that uh, kind of stood out like during during playthroughs and stuff and how they feel. It felt really good. Hon honestly, I am a big fan of Leviathan. Big fan of all those units. Really, really good stuff. Yeah, and like... It's not like... I don't know. The units, of course, because they're Tyranids right now, are completely broken. But like, these are also just the ones that are comfortable and consistent to play with. Is how I feel. It's not like you don't have to do any crazy strategy. You can just go in there with your own game plan, fight any army, and just do really well. Yeah, big time. That uh, that concludes our very first post game review, uh, part one. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We'll be yeah, thank you very much. Part two next week, and maybe catch a game some point in between. We'll just have to figure things out but possibly yeah thanks for thanks for watching guys um uh, and remember we're team doom spiral we doom so you don't have to have a good one <laughs>